In this next segment, we're going to talk again under the category of C or complements. This time we're going to talk about modifiers. Modifiers, what I want you to remember about modifiers is that modifiers make you mad. Modifiers make us mad because there's so many rules to remember around it. So here's why you need to remember that modifiers make you mad. There are three ways that we're going to evaluate modifiers. Three ways that we're going to evaluate modifiers. Three rules, really, that have to gauge how we're going to do that evaluation. So the first is, for M, that modifiers need to be close to the words that they modify. We're going to talk more about that in this segment. The second is that you've got to correctly use adjectives and adverbs, which are modifier words. And the third is that you want to watch out for dangling modifiers. Now, these tend to all be tools or rules that you actually will break if you don't correctly use the modifiers. In this segment, let's first talk about keeping modifiers close to the words that they modify. So again, in this segment, we're going to talk about the first rule for modifiers, which is modifiers need to be close to the words that they modify. Now, here's what I want you to remember. If words in the sentence, modifier words, aren't close to the words that they modify, two problems can occur. One, your sentence or the relationship between the modifiers won't be clear and it won't be correct. So we want our modifier words to be close to the words that they modify so our sentence will be clear and the relationship will be correct. If you don't have a modifier relationship that is clear and correct, your sentence is going to pop. Now, if your sentence relationship between your modifiers isn't clear and it isn't correct, that relationship is going to pop. And your sentence isn't going to be correct. So let's talk about this POP. The POP are three types of typically misused modifier relationships. So I'm going to show you three different types of incorrect or unclear modifier relationships to look for in your sentences. Okay, so here is a classic example of our first P, which stands for pronouns. Now, pronouns need to have a clear referent. They need to have a clear referent. If it's ambiguous, if the referent relationship, meaning the word that the pronoun is talking about, if you can't figure that out in the sentence, or it's ambiguous, slightly unclear, you have a modifier that's not correctly close to the modifier word that it's linking. So let's look at this sentence and talk about why it's problematic. Jill gave the phone to Sally and she called her mother. Well, I'm going to underline my pronouns, she and her. Now the problem in this sentence is that I have a feminine pronoun, but I have two feminine reference. And I can't tell in this sentence if she is referring to Sally or to Jill. So did Jill uh, give the phone to Sally and Jill called Sally's mother? Or did Jill give the phone to Sally and Sally called Jill's mother? Or did Jill give the phone to Sally and Jill called her own mother? We're just not sure who called whom in this sentence. So this would be if I were to see this sentence on an exam or in my paper or in something I've written, I'd need to rewrite it so that I can clarify and have a clear modifier relationship. Let me restructure the sentence to show how we can do that. So now I've fixed the sentence. And to do that, I basically had to remove the pronouns entirely. Because the pronouns were both feminine and, and there are two feminine reference, there really isn't a great way to leave the pronouns in there and keep that modifier relationship clean and correct. 
So I'm going to remove them and put in the actual referent so that there is absolute clarity about the fact that Sally called Jane's mother. Now let me show you the very next type of modifier relationship that we want to keep clean and clear. Okay, so the next modifier type that we're going to talk about is the word only. And I'm singling out only because we frequently misuse this modifier word. Let me give you an example. In this sentence, Jim, who sells tacos, I'm saying Jim only sold two tacos. Now, when you hear that sentence, you're thinking, oh, he wanted to sell 10, but he only sold two. In fact, however, and I need my pen to help me analyze this. Remember, don't do it by ear. Grab your pen. This sentence is actually telling me that, because I'm going to circle my only, Jim only sold two tacos versus received two tacos or bought two tacos or made two tacos or something else. The, the main factor here is that the word only is modifying, this adverb is modifying whatever comes after it. It's going to modify whatever word comes after it. So this sentence, even though I want it to say that he sold only two tacos, it's in fact saying he only sold versus bought versus made the tacos. So let's quickly make the switch and fix this sentence so that we're correctly using the word only. Now my sentence is saying what I want it to say. Jim sold, I'll circle the word only, and remember it modifies exactly the word that comes after it, two tacos instead of 10. That is what I'm trying to say. So now let's go and we'll talk about our final modifier type that ends up sometimes making our sentences not clear and correct. Okay, so our final way that we want to make sure our sentence has clear and correct modifier relationships so that they don't make us mad is in using and placing prepositions correctly. Now, I've talked a lot about keeping your pen in hand when you're evaluating your paper. You need to do the same thing for prepositions. Only unlike adjectives and adverbs where we circle it and we draw an arrow to whatever comes next to it, in this case, we're going to take the preposition, we're going to draw an arrow to what comes behind it and make sure that that preposition is hanging on to the right word that it's modifying. So let's look at this sentence as an example of what I'm talking about. Please bring the lunch to the conference from Cafe Rio. So in other words, I'm saying I'm hungry and we're at a conference and you bought lunch at Cafe Rio, please bring it to the conference so that we can eat it. However, this sentence, even if it might sound okay in your ear, is incorrect. Why? Because what the sentence is actually saying is, please bring the lunch to the conference over here that we're having from Cafe Rio. So we've got this cool conference from Cafe Rio, and we want you to bring the lunch to it. Now, how can I tell that that's what the sentence is saying? Well, I'm going to mark my prepositional phrase, and then see what it's actually hanging on to or talking about. So in this case, let's start with from. And this preposition is saying that, that Cafe Rio, or pardon me, that the conference is from Cafe Rio. In actuality, what's from Cafe Rio? Well, it's the lunch. So I need to rewrite my sentence as follows. Now my prepositional phrase is correctly placed and it's telling me, thank goodness, that the, the lunch is from Cafe Rio. So now you can bring the lunch from Cafe Rio to the conference. Watch those prepositional phrases. They tend, the misplaced ones, tend to hang out at the end of the sentence because what happens is we write and we think and we kind of add on details. And so sometimes when we add on those details as we write, we put them in the wrong spot. 
the easiest thing to do when you're editing or reviewing your already written sentences is to circle those prepositional phrases and make sure as you draw that arrow going back, they are in fact talking about the correct word that you want them to modify.